Yes, of course I can explain this. It's very easy to see. If you look at the pictures that I have submitted, you will see that my middle and youngest children constantly have bruising on their shins. Middle also has multiple leg scrapes. There is a video that goes with each picture of the children explaining where the bruising and scrapes come from. Middle always tells me he gets hurt because mommy is too mean to him. How old are your middle and youngest children? Middle is five and my baby just turned one. There is absolutely no reason they should be so bruised and cut up. It is clear evidence of Abu Dalari. Sir, it is extremely common for children of that age to have cuts and bruises on their extremities. Even babies get bruised up when they are crawling and learning how to walk. Have you reported your suspicions to the authorities? I have informed the gal multiple times, but have yet to hear back. I am hoping to ask her what her thoughts are on this today. And now I am telling you. Is there anything else you can present that you believe to be signs of Abu Dalar E? Well, I know that someone reported to the gal after our last hearing that Bailey had been locking our babies in their room for hours. I also know that she has pulled oldest out of school for the next year and will not be allowing middle to go to kindergarten. Your Honor, if I may, I have chosen the option of online schooling for the first part of next school year due to the pandemic. I work from home and am trying to limit exposure. Both children are enrolled and will be attending online school. My children are social butterflies and thrive on interaction with other children. The fact that she will deny them the chance at a normal education and experience shows she is neglectful of their feelings or emotions. They deserve a normal childhood. This is exactly why I should have a say in their education. She clearly cannot be trusted to make the decisions that are best for my babies. She is just being selfish. How do you believe that online schooling is her being selfish? It is the same education they would receive if they attended in person. Since she works from home, she doesn't want to be bothered to wake up and get the children ready and drive them anywhere. She just wants to neglect their hygiene and sit them in front of a computer screen all day. She has a history of caring for her hygiene and appearance more than the children. You should see the amount of makeup and skincare she owns. Thank you for your input, Nick. We will now move on to Bailey. But I'm not done. I have hours and hours worth of evidence to discuss with you. And I will look over what you have submitted before giving my final decision. But for now, we have to move on. Bailey, what are you seeking in court today? I am seeking to retain full legal custody of the children, as well as requesting Nick take co-parenting classes and anger management. I am also requesting the use of our family wizard for all communications between both parties to help keep conversations civil. I am also requesting that my attorney's fees be assigned to Nick due to us returning to court due to his inability to cooperate with me and work in the best interest of the children. There's no way in he I'm going to be paying your attorney's fees when I can't even pay for my own attorney. If you can't afford an attorney, you shouldn't have one. It's that simple. Finally, I would like to request that Nick be moved to supervised visitations until he is done with his co-parenting and anger management classes. Why do you believe you need a parenting communication app to successfully co-parent? If you look through the text transcripts that I have provided, you will see that most conversations with Nick never stay to the point of the children and almost always end in him harassing and threatening me in any way possible. He also has begun to claim that I refuse to answer the phone to his calls for the children. If you look at my official call transcripts from my phone company, you will see the calls I have received from him in the past two months. I have never ignored a phone call. 
If we were to sign up for the full service app, he would be able to call through the app. This way, the call log will not be able to be disputed or manipulated in court. That sounds very reasonable. I will order the use of our family wizard. Each party will be responsible for the initial fee of the app. In the state of emergency, phone calls are acceptable outside of the app. I will use the app if she has to pay for it. I cannot afford to sign up and pay for something else. Don't I already have to pay enough? Can't this come out of child support? Each parent will be responsible for their portion. You will have 30 days post court to pay for your portion to use the app. Cool, something else I can't afford. I don't know how you expect someone to pay this much. I believe that Nick is detrimental to our children's wealth being with the way he is currently acting. I believe that he is willing to cause emotional damage to our children in his attempt to get back at me for leaving him. He has shown multiple times that he is willing to coach the children to lie about what happens in my home and seek a necessary medical treatment in order to paint me out to be a neglectful parent. He does these things in order to cause me pain and worry. But the only ones he is really hurting in the long run are our children. They are the victims in his need for revenge. How is he seeking unnecessary medical treatment when he has no medical decision-making rights? Recently, he brought our youngest to the emergency room without my knowledge or consent because he had not pooped in the first hours of his visitation. Your Honor, I am aware that impactment and bowel issues can be a major sign of child sexual abadalary. I needed to be sure that my youngest and most vulnerable child was not being harmed in that way. Any sane father would do the same, especially when his children lived in a home with two strange men a majority of the time without their father. They do not live with strange men. They live with their grandparents and uncle. There is nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there is. They may not be strangers, but they're both really strange. Besides, what type of weirdo lives at home at 20? Your brother is old enough to move out. I don't want him in the house with my kids. He is in college. There's nothing wrong with him staying at home until he graduates. You are just looking for false issues to create. Is there anything else you would like to add before I call on the gal to speak? No, Your Honor. I believe that whatever the guardian ad litem has to say will only validate my testimony. Your Honor, I would like to request that the gal be barred from speaking. I have been unable to pay my portion of her fee. So I feel her judgment will be biased based on that fact. It is not just to have a bias gal. Request denied. The gal is here to represent the best interests of the children. Any matters of payments will be handled fairly outside of this courtroom. Well, then I request that any biased statements made by the gal be ignored and not considered during your final decision. It is only fair. My final ruling will be made based on all evidence and testimony provided. I am the guardian ad litem assigned to the children of Nick and Bailey. Since being assigned to this case, I have completed home interviews and spoken to relevant parties multiple times. I believe my testimony will be in the best interests of the children. I will begin with the mother, Bailey. Before even speaking to Bailey for the first time, I received a phone call from a female relative of the father claiming to know that Bailey has been locking her children in their room for hours during the day. When I completed my home inspection of Bailey's home, I found that the children's bedroom door was not able to be locked at all. There was also no lock on the closet. The children had safe sleeping spaces and adequate amounts of toys and clothes. Bailey allowed me to inspect the entire home on my drop-in inspection. 
The home appeared lived in, yet not messy. There was adequate amounts of food, clothing, and toys available to the children at all times. The house was safe and up to code. When asked about the father, Bailey did not speak negatively about him. She expressed concerns but did not attempt to sway my decision on the father. When I spoke to the children on the mother's time at a later visit, the children were clean and happy. They were willing to speak to me and did not seem worried about anything they had to say. It was clear the children had not been coached on what to say by their mother. In regards to the father, I have completed two different home inspections. One in his original apartment and the other once the father moved into his parents' home. I will focus on the grandparents' home as that is where the children have spent the most time. At the grandparents' home, the children either sleep in bed with the grandparents or on the couch with their father. There is no crib or pack and play for the baby. There is a spare bedroom at the grandparents' house, but they use it as a home office and are not willing to convert it into a bedroom while their son stays with them. When I spoke to the children during their father's time, I found that the children were much less willing to speak to me. They seemed unsure of what to say, which leads me to believe that they had been instructed on what to say by another adult. They changed their stories about their mother multiple times. These stories never lined up with the facts about what may have happened. It was very concerning. After my initial visit, I began receiving videos and phone calls from the father every time he had the children. How would you say that the stories did not line up? There were multiple times that Nick would send me videos of the children saying that their mother beat them with belts, but then show a small scrape that would not come from a belt. Or for example saying their mother locked them in their room when that was impossible. I instructed Nick to not send me videos of the kids being coached, because I could hear him in the video leading the children on what to say. He then told me that if I truly believe he was the one coaching the children that I was incompetent at my job. After that incident, I no longer heard from Nick. I attempted to set up phone meetings or Zoom meetings with him to check in, and he would never return my calls. Instead, I began receiving phone calls about the children from Nick's mother. I can say that I have heard from Linda more than anyone else during this process. This also became an issue when it came time to discuss payment with Nick. He refused to answer or pay, and his mother stated that he was not liable to pay because he was not the one contacting me. After completing your investigation, can you give an unbiased and final opinion on what is best for the children? Yes, Your Honor. I do believe that, while behaviors have not been best from the father, that the children should be allowed to have meaningful relationships with both parents. This should only be if both parties can refrain from attempted alienation from the other. It would be in the best interest of the children if the parents were ordered to communicate over our family wizard. And I would recommend assigning the father to pay extra to add the tone monitor onto communications to ensure civil communication. I would recommend the court's order that the father is to provide beds and a room for the children, either in the spare bedroom of the grandparents' house or in a new residence. The children should have access to their own beds. And finally, I would request a co-parenting class be completed by both parents and the children be enrolled in therapy as soon as possible. Do you believe that the father should obtain more custody of the children once these steps are completed? No, Your Honor, I believe that even after these steps are taken, the father should remain at minimum visitation with no medical or education rights until further notice. I believe the father having more custody would not be in the best interest of the children. Let us take a recess so I can review the evidence and we will reconvene when I am ready to give my final judgment. 
I am ready to give my final judgment. The court has decided that in the matter of the custody of the three children of Nick and Bailey, the mother will retain sole legal custody and the father will be allowed every other weekend visitation. The parents are ordered to communicate solely through our family wizard. The father is ordered to pay for the subscription as well as the tone meter to ensure civility. Both parents are ordered to take a class on co-parenting within the next 45 days. The father is responsible to pay the mother's attorney's fees within the next 60 days. The father is ordered to provide separate beds and a room for the children in his residence. The children are not to stay overnight with the father until this is provided. What happens if I can't pay those fees? Does she just get to keep my kids away from me because of money? If you fail to follow the court order, then you will be found in contempt of court. Well, then I guess I will be found in contempt again, because there is no way I can pay all of this within this time frame. I have to support myself as well. I can't stay in my parents' house forever, and I can't move out again while paying all of these stupid fees. I recommend speaking to Bailey's attorney about setting up a payment plan for your fees. That should be done as soon as possible. I'm not begging anyone let alone that bitch for help. I shouldn't have to pay her attorney's fees. That is a scam. This is my final decision. You may not like it, but it will not change. Court is now dismissed. I hope you're fucking happy now, Bailey. I hope that you see how sick and twisted you are. You have taken everything from me and I have done nothing but give you the world. You are evil. You have done nothing but destroy me for fun. I have attempted to cooperate with you since we split. I am not the one making this more difficult. Please take this opportunity to learn to put the children first instead of constantly trying to hurt me. Don't try to blame this on me. You refuse to work with me on anything. You've twisted everything to make me the bad guy. You have gaslighted me so much since destroying our family, and I hope you realize that you're going to make me unalive. Don't try to guilt trip me, Nick. It isn't going to work. Get some help for your and your kids' sake. You really need it. 